my name is Jack Quintanar. And I'm David Clemens. And I'm a graduating senior about to embark on a gap year of a lifetime. Destination Voices is what we're calling it. David and I will be traveling first to South America, then to North Africa, and then to Southeast Asia. And I've chosen to engage in this gap year so that I can become a more globally engaged citizen and be well-rounded by the time I get into my higher education. Hello, my name is Jack Quintanar, and I'm participating in Destination Voices, um, creating the name, creating what the plan is every single day, every week we meet. Um, it's beautiful. Yeah. And what does it mean to you? Why are you taking a year out of your life before you go to college? Mm -hmm. Spending all these resources and energy to. So that's really kind of a goal of the trip is to go out into the world and see who can go to these places. Is it accessible for people with different um, physical disabilities? Is it accessible for people who don't have um, monetary resources? And how accessible and where can they go? It's really like, it's just to see that there's a possibility there. And why is being a global citizen important to you at all? And why does that why does that matter? Some people never leave, you know, their home state. It's like why mm -hmm. why does that matter to you? I think you could be a global citizen without leaving your home state. Um, but to really engage with the different cultures of the world, I think is very important um, in any way possible because we're already globalizing. Like the internet is c connecting everybody, even if you've never met them before. Um, things like Kickstarter and um, different volunteer websites, connect people from all ends of the world, and the more that we're connected, the more we can actually accomplish. So I think that going out and living that, living that connection, and being able to show that like through these different connections, I can make a year trip, and I can go all these places, um, it really will just raise confidence, I think, in myself and in others that see it happen, that they will be able to actually connecting is more than just a business strategy it's more than just like something wealthy people can go out and do with their spare time it's actually like, very important and crucial to each piece of our life we're hoping that you will share in this journey with us we're going to start off in mexico and head down through central america into south america including colombia ecuador peru Bolivia, Brazil, and finally we'll end up in Argentina. Then we'll go to North Africa. We'll stop in Morocco first, and then over to Egypt, and finally Ethiopia, on our way out to India, Sri Lanka, and then finally Southeast Asia. We're hoping that you'll join us along the way. How can we help? And we'll have a blog, we'll have a Twitter feed. I think we're going to have a Flickr page as well, right? With yeah. All the photos that you take? Mm -hmm. Jet happens to be a great photographer, and she's also an incredible artist. So she'll be documenting a lot of what we do in these places around the world through her own artistic expression of that. And she happens to be a good writer as well, do Yeah, that's thanks. But so do you. We're also hoping to utilize this man's voice and do some good interviews. And that's why Destination Voices is called Destination Voices. We'll be capturing the voices of the locals, the people we're staying with, and the the real essence of the places we're going to be. So we hope that you'll be one of those voices and be a part of our journey as we venture out into the world. We really want this to be a shared journey. We talk about things like crowdfunding, crowd sharing, crowdsourcing, and we would like you to be a part of this. So join us for the next year. We'll begin in August of 2014, and we'll wrap things up at the end of July 2015 as Jet heads out to start her year of higher education. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much. Is there a Destination Voices handshake? Can we practice? Uh -huh. We are Destination Voices. Why do we want to practice? Why don't we just say Why you? We are Destination Voices. Yeah. But we don't have to say it together. Because we represent two voices. Oh, goodness. Not one.
So I'll say we, you say our, us the destination, you say voices. We are destination voices. <laughs> That's a wrap! Get over here, Paul. Oh, yeah, you gotta get over that hug. Get over here. Get over here. We, we gotta have a group hug. We bonded. Group hug. We bonded. Yay. Group hug. Jeez. Is it on timer? No. Oh, it's, it's video. It's oh. video. Oh. <laughs> You're like so. We're live. <laughs> we are destination. <laughs> Super cheesy. You wanna go over the top? Let's do it. <laughs>
The Digital Public Library of America has a wiki online with lots of information about what we're thinking. We've also got a four-page concept note, which we've put online, which represents the latest thinking of this broad-based group. But beyond that, we are still very open about what we're, in fact, going to build in terms of a Digital Public Library of America. And one thing that's happened in the last several months of planning this initiative is that a number of people have come forward to us and said, we really just want to start building something and to be able to show an idea of what a Digital Public Library of America might look like. And it turned out that it was more than one group that came forward with this view, so that we were in a position where it would be tricky to decide up front who might be the one to build it. And we thought what we might do is to turn to the internet community broadly, to the library community broadly, to the worldwide community, and say, if you have ideas for what a Digital Public Library of America could be, we'd love to see them. And to run a very short process where we encourage people to let us know in the next few weeks that you are interested in doing this by sending us uh, a letter to the steering committee of the DPLA and the information will all be up on our wiki online and a simple Google or Baidu or other search will come up with the, uh, the uh, website for the DPLA uh, as well. And uh, once you have told us that you're going to do this, we would encourage you then for the next several months to run a process where you yourself build out some aspect of what a DPLA might be. And I could imagine that this could take the, um, a number of different forms. So in the course of a few months, you might come up with a series of PowerPoint slides, a very, very simple mechanism for describing to us what a DPLA might look like. You might also build a full-fledged application, something that would demonstrate somewhat more actively what a DPLA could be. So we're open to a wide range of different uh, approaches to demonstrating in this beta sprint what a DPLA could be. We'd also encourage you to think about different aspects of a DPLA. So I could very much imagine somebody looking hard at what a database structure might look like, or someone might look at what protocols might uh, be in terms of the way in which one was structured. One might look at how different communities might interface with a DPLA. One of the things we've seen a lot in the discussion list online, which is open and you're welcome to join the discussion list as well, is discussion about whether or not academic libraries, research libraries, and public libraries all have the same needs and whether or not there should be one interface or many interfaces. So this seems to me a chance where people could pick up any number of these different aspects of things and demonstrate in a public way what a DPLA might be. And what we're going to do with it is we will uh, ask people to send to us by September 1st, 2011, the results of their uh, beta sprint efforts. And the steering committee will take a look at these uh, various submissions. And we look forward very much to seeing what, what we receive. We will also be setting up an external group of people who have particular technical expertise, as well as some other skill sets that we think ought to read on this process. And then with the advice of that expert group, we're going to select a few of the beta sprint uh, participants to present at a public big tent meeting that we're thinking of hosting in early fall, probably October and probably in Washington, DC. So at the end of this, we would have from a group of uh, partners. We hope people will form collaborations in order to come up with beta sprint entries. We'll have a series of submissions that we will then uh, be putting online and encouraging people to play with and experience in various ways. And we will look forward to a public discussion in this, uh, roughly speaking, October meeting where we'll uh, talk about how to go forward with a DPLA. And in a broader context, we also expect that there will be a fair amount of homework that will be going on in terms of defining what a DPLA is in particular. We have various work streams, um, five or six or seven. We're refining the exact number, and all that work is going on on the wiki today. And the beta sprint, in a way, will run in parallel to that early work going on. We would then imagine that, roughly speaking, 18 months after the October meeting, which we hope will be something of a kickoff, we would then, in fact, have an operative DPLA initiative that would actually have a prototype, something people could be using, and which would uh, be, in fact, a boon to the people of uh, the United States and beyond, I hope. So that's the idea behind the beta sprint. We're very hopeful that we will get a lot of innovative ideas submitted through this mechanism. And again, we encourage a range of different approaches. We encourage a range of different slices of the 
uh, of the stack of the, um, if you want to think about the technology as a matter of layers. And we certainly encourage a broad range of people with different viewpoints to submit ideas and to help us to envision what a digital public library of America could be. And I'm very eager to review your submissions. And thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, as John Palfrey signing off for the steering committee of the DPLA, thank you so much.